to us yesterday i think the last class we saw this uh, about the weight pattern so it's why i'm just uh, making a recap of the same we started with w04 tetrahedra and i told you that we have to use ph6 to 7 and it becomes h w6 over 21 and phi minus okay so this existed in equilibrium and it get w to 1 over 41 and minus and same This existed in equilibrium. Uh, pH less than three, pH greater than three. Into is two double four one four p six minus. And what happened? Yes, pH less than one. Double four three. So this was parallel state. For this, parallel state B, and this. This we call it as the meta tungsten. So this is this I told you is very really essential part of the heterobody acids and isobody acids. So in all, if this was containing any Heteroatoms, uh, we just call it as the isopolyl acids. Again, this is a very good reference that I have taken from the book that this shows the isopolyl acids there. So these are the octahedras there. Okay, these are the octahedra. So you just uh, you can see this and underline one octahedra here. This one is a very good octahedra. I mean, very good means in the sense that it's clearly visible. This is an octahedra. So you have to draw this. Okay. So this is an octahedra, and and what is the description about it? The description about it is that <coughs> one, two, three, and four. Here it is. They share edges. Okay. Here, the edges are more or less like this. Here, this is an edge. So it didn't go like this. Okay. And so, if you draw a thing like this, now here this is the edge sharing, and this is another edge there. Three and four, this is an edge there. Here you have another edge there. Okay, so this comes here, and this edge, this edge is shared by three and four. So <coughs> one and three, this one and three, as well as two and four. Two and four share corners. So this is a corner. Which one is corner? This one. This one is corner. This is also another corner. So you need to write this about the edges and the corners. And what is more important thing is here this one, two, three, and four they share a rectangle. This is what is being said there. Right. So the remaining three octahedra are so placed that they share edges with their nearest neighbors. Now, a good example is ammonium molybdate oxide. Okay, the octa molybdate ion in NH4 four times in O8 by O26 by H2 has a similar but somewhat complete structure shown in 10.3b. Okay, 
Now the only thing is you have uh, an extra octahedra here like this and uh, they are just displaced here. Rather than this octahedra coming here, it is just uh, sharing the edge there. One and three, one and three are sharing edges. Sharing uh, edges there. Rather than corner. Okay, so what is the most important thing for this is uh, uh, kicking structure. Okay, not the again here. So you can imagine this octahedra there. This is the octahedra. Okay, it's the base. Okay, so above that you have something like this. Now this is the base. As we draw one an octahedra. Okay, this these are the lines one, two, three, and four. This is it one, two, three, and four. So likewise you have another octahedra here. See this another octahedra there. Okay. So there is some defect there. But what is important here is some tetrahedra is being shared inside there. This is a tetrahedra there. It's a tetrahedra. So you will need to, these are just the axis that is there. Suppose if this is x axis, this is y axis, and this is z axis. So along the axis there is a, some clogging of this structure and that is uh, known as the Kagin structure on a crystalline hydrate of about uh, the silicates SI12, SIW12O44 minus ion, so it has got a base like this. So here if you have a cube, you can see that uh, there is an octahedra that is, there is a tetrahedra there. This one is a tetrahedra. Is a tetrahedra. And at the same time, if you have uh, <coughs> this one, uh, what is it? Uh, the this. This will form the base of a base of a octahedra so that means you can just build up an octahedra there or this is an octahedra top this is an octahedra top just So there is another base, another one, and the back of this you have got this one. So you have such four edges in the top, four at top, and four the bottom there going inside this place. Four at the at the bottom. Okay, so this should make a, a very interesting crystal structure. On the same Kagin structure, you can have P two W eighteen O sixty two. So here is uh, P is there. So remember when you have P, it should be actually a P of four. So this is a hetero unit, and therefore this constitutes the hetero poly acids. Hetero poly acid. The same structure is there, like the one you draw the about for the Kagin structure. Kagin structure, but only thing is you have got. Uh, uh, this 2 PO4 tetrahedra is there. P O this name this okay. So you will have O 4 O here, 4 O here, and 1 P somewhere at the center of this. And this is P there. So this is what is sitting there. Okay. So the structure of P. 2 W18 
you can just need to you can just uh, uh, have to draw only the base of an octahedra and the tetrahedra and they just explain that the nine poly acids are uh, what happens when you have PO4 within an OMO6 tetrahedra. So this is a very important structure and very often asked them. Okay. So in this particular uh, figure 10, 6 MO6 six MO6 octahedra. Okay, you just keep and keep in mind any octahedra. I'm just drawing an octahedra here. The top and here at the bottom I'm just putting there. So something which is from here to here is this and from here to here is this. So you have four things there. Now you can just imagine what is happening there to the octahedra. How they are just uh, taking up this. This particular octahedra is having a base like this. At this point. It's the base of a, uh, this particular octahedra. Okay. So on top of it you have uh, the four triangles. This is this one. This is This is two, and then you have this three, and then you have this fourth one, like going like this. Okay, so you can see this. The this top portion is just here, and uh, this base is there. Okay, so below that it is also this. This below that it is this one, and just you projected into a particular gap. So 6 mo tetra are in hexagonal annulus. What is meant by this uh, annulus, you know, you have heard of this word annulus. Annulus is a little ring that is formed here. So we have been uh, giving focus on several aspects. So I have told you how you can come out uh, into, into an octahedral pattern. Suppose if we just view this particular uh, Octahedra from above, and uh, another thing that we have seen is the two triangles which we have uh, seen in the previous uh, crystalline structure. If you have such two triangles, so one uh, these two triangles, you know, uh, just impose over them, and then we joined these two these these by means of uh, some two layers. So the first one is one layer, and then we got a, a hexagonal pattern like this. Remember this. The this one is one layer, this one is one layer, and the bottom one is another layer there. So these two trigonal systems can give rise to a pattern which you can beautifully call as a, a, a hexagon like this. Okay. Okay. So this small hexagonal ring. Okay. Small ring is uh, called as the annulus. Small ring is called as the annulus. So you can have two such arrangement of the atoms, and by means of this, I just told you that how you can have atoms at the corner of this. You can have six atoms, uh, three atoms in one layer, and and three more atoms in the next layer there three more atoms in the next layer this one right so this was giving rise to some some hexagonal pattern and each pattern is this is the the center points of these have been taken in such a way that uh, they form a kind of annular ring here this is center this is the next center this is the next center next center here next center here next center here so almost uh, there is no this 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 slope is just going like this do you have center point there and the edge and this another molecules corner you know they are going to give if you view from the above you are going to get a hexagonal pattern like this hexagonal pattern and this hexagonal pattern is what we call as the an hexagon there you share two corners of each of the two neighboring octahedra corners you know these are the corners okay this is a corner and this is the edge okay 
in this entire thing you know you one side you know you, you call it as the face okay edge corner face and sometimes this is also called as the apex so there is an apex uh, sharing of these atoms right? and this one is forming a base this one we will call it as a, a base so these bases are what we see here okay this one is coming to the top and this is going on this is the two sides of the triangle so the central cavity results in in homo 6 o24 octahedra structure is found to be just large enough to accommodate an octahedron corresponding with that of the heteroid this structure was subsequently identified in potassium ammonia molybdate containing this one so here you can see that homo 6 o24 is an octahedra but you are adding tellurium and then you are just calling it as a heteropod of the acid. So this is potentiated to uh, turn into H. Uh, another example is this uh, vanadium uh, molybdate. When it says vanadate is there. So it is uh, protonated and you get uh, H2 butane O8 and it is pH is valid about 3.5 in a very acidic solution. You get uh, the 10 vo 2 plus there. So the last it's uh, a dioxide and uh, doesn't will if you just reverse it it may not go back but in the case of uh, this uh, 10 vanadium acid it is going to it, there is a reversible reaction arrow there most do not give for most in in most of the times i think i told you about uh, cro3 you know this doesn't uh, when you get cro3 or cro2 which is very highly reactive it doesn't go back to the high poly acids but vanadium is going high poly anion but vanadium is going back and you get a v10 o28 so this you need to remember this so a novel approach plus step of this aggregation process aggregation means it's a what is meant by aggregation you are just joining more and more if you're joining more and more process has been used this is the use of nmr of the 51b nucleus 19 percent of the abundant Okay, like just like F19 NMR and uh, C14 NMR, this one is V51 NMR is there. It has a quantum number of 7.2, perhaps the largest spin you are going to get because you don't get anywhere. It's very interesting. So it has got electrical quantum moment of 7.3 centimeters, so very huge. And it is increasing to find, interesting to find that the result substance in above annotation schemes. So, decamanidate CA3 V10 O28 16 H2O and K2 ZN2 V10 O28 16 H2O both uh, having this uh, V10 28 and this V10 28. Okay, both are having V10 28, V10 28 units, which are kind of a very important point there, has been determined by V6 O28 and they contain is is found to have this particular structure which is nothing but vo 6 octahedra so again i'm just uh, asking you to draw the octahedra like this okay this one is here it goes here and this one octahedra like this so you can see uh, i'll just uh, highlight one of the octahedra there so here it goes this is the uh, top octahedra okay so here you have this and this one and this one and then this one is also there so you have this octahedra and you can see that uh, you can just uh, take it as something challenging here i'll use a graph of this to to highlight if you view from the above you can have a octahedra base like this at one point of time and another one like this and another one like this and then and then if you join in between like this not exactly on the lines of that then you can have one more attractor so the top apex will be just like this apex of this will be so these are all the octahedral bases and you can see that these bases are going in a kind of unlock so this is a word that we use to describe about the annuline 16 aluminum, 17 aluminum, like benzene like components in the organic chemistry that we use. So, these are this is one octahedra that is there. One base is this one, this base is this one. So, you have to give do an exercise of doing this, and you can see that there are about uh, 
वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन टेन टेन वैनेडियम एटम्स एंड इक्वल एंड अमाउंट ऑफ दी ऑक्सीजन एटम्स इज जस्ट शेयरिंग नॉट एक्जैक्टली ऑल द लाइन्स आर नॉट बॉन्ड दे आर जस्ट दी एक्जस्ट सो यू मस्ट कीप इन माइंड दैट यू हैव ओनली वी एंड सिक्स ऑक्सीजन बॉन्ड्स रेस्ट ऑफ द टेम और जस्ट द स्पेसेस हैव ओके सो दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर दैट आई हैव बीन लॉन्गिंग आई एम अगेन गोइंग टू पुट ए इक्वेशन हियर इट इज you see this i'm just trying to add an image I'm just i'm trying to generate it paste it here so let us see this is this you just uh, rearrange them and see what is the equation that i have been trying p2 mo 18 o 62 okay here it is so p2 mo 18 18 should be at the bottom i think P2 MO 18 O 62. So this is six minus six minus right plus uh, uh, 34 OH. Uh, what does uh, that that OH mean? That uh, OH means it is a basic. So you are just increasing the pH or decreasing the pH. You are just decreasing the pH. Uh, increasing the pH. So it gives rise to 18 MO O 4. M O O four. This is this is a tetrahedra because it's not having six atoms there. M O O four. A two minus is there. Plus H uh, P O four two minus plus sixteen H two O, which is nothing but N I W six twenty four H six. Here it is. N I W six O twenty four H six four minus. Any idea where it came from? So it is about the same at uh, isopyl acids that uh, we have been seeing there. So plus finally it gives when you just to keep on increasing the base concentration that is uh, increasing the decreasing the pH you are going to get the W O four two minus finally W O four two minus. So it can be a reversible reaction. I will write this in the. Uh, Description part of that. Throughout the specific range of pH and other condition, most solutions of tropolymeric states and tropolytic states appear to be in time. Predominantly, only one description, one distinct species there, and many of which are remarkably stable and non-labile. They don't react at all. Okay. So, uh, some one more thing about this uh, is that I'm just going to uh, give one picture there. About uh, some reactions, how it has happened with the case of the ferric oxide. You'll have to wait. I just wonder how can I paste it there? I think not. So I'm not getting there. Just please wait. I'll just uh, put it in terms of the. Um, Here is the most important part of the reaction that I have. To, I'm just going to end up there. So you can see that they, you are having a pH two six three plus, and on adding this two H plus, you are going to get two hydroxides. Just like you remember that bridge to hydrogen atoms, I we started with. Okay, so that OH and OH are there, and then you it gives with H two O. This is the reaction of uh, ferric uh, hydroxide. I mean, ferric uh, aquated ferric samples in the case of uh, some acidification. So further thing, you know, you can get this. So same thing is happening with platinum in S three six. You get N S three, N S two, an amino complex, and then uh, any M S two or six with uh, one water removed and uh, this is a study made to find out where this this is a Labeled oxygen, and you can see that the labeled oxygen is going inside the formation of the complex with removal of one more H2O there. It is going into the inner spheres. So uh, again, you have CO, CN5, H2O, and then you you get this, and this is uh, a uh, this is a kind of reaction that also forms uh, several octahedral components like this one. That like like the one we have seen. We just have a look at the reactions there. The last equation that I just put is not uh, very important, 
but this just uh, so it, you just ignore this. I don't know how some of this is coming. But this one, if you reduce minus s2, again it can form the oxo bridges. So all the molecules that form oxo bridges, particularly in the case of this, uh, such a complexes may give rise to some heterophile acids. Okay. So thank you for joining me. I think you have had a very good idea about this. See you soon.